The Goat House is back with NFL trade candidates to watch during this early portion of the season and into the NFL trade deadline. Already some rumors swirling around there, even though it's very early. Probably due to the Bryce Young benching, but I identified several key trade candidates to watch and I have some landing spots as well. Let's take a look. And let's just start with Bryce Young, who potentially could be on the trading block. That's the talk because he was just benched for Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton will have his first game as a starter this season with the Panthers this week, so we'll see how that goes. Pretty telling of the Panthers' new staff that they've given up on Bryce Young that quickly. Obviously, they don't, do not believe in him at all. So that's not ideal. What else is not ideal is it feels like he's picked up some bad habits since being in the NFL thrown into a bad situation you know mainly when it comes to pressure he's too focused on pressure rather than downfield at his targets open receivers too worried about scrambling making bad decisions in the pocket and outside the pocket so that's kind of the issue do teams feel like they can bring him in and break those bad habits because we see it often with young quarterbacks and they can't really break those um, what would the compensation be where what was the trade value it can't be much but will the Panthers give him away probably wouldn't give him away but Landing spots that make sense. Well, here's another thing. People probably want to talk about teams that need a quarter, a starting quarterback right now. That is who's going to trade for Bryce Young. I think that's false. I, I No one's going to trade for him to start him. He's still more of a project. He's more of a long-term guy that a team wants to give a second chance to bring in, develop a little bit. Uh, but if a team could use a depth quarterback right now, it's kind of a bonus. And that's where Miami kind of stands out. They they kind of fill both those categories where, you know, two is out right now. They could use another quarterback, not necessarily a start. He would be third string right now. And I do think two is going to play again this season, but we'll see. So they could use a guy now, and they also could use a guy for a future because how long is two going to be able to play football for them? If he gets injured again, people are already talking about retirement right now. I don't think it's going to happen, but if he gets injured again, I think that no one's going to let him play anymore. So that could happen. Mike McDaniel, really good system. I think he'd believe in himself uh, to to be able to fix and develop Bryce Young. Alabama connection between him and Tua and Jalen Waddle out there as well. That's kind of a bonus. The Giants wouldn't start him right now. He, honestly, he'd probably be fourth string right now. But Brian Dayball, Alabama backgrounds, they weren't there at the same time. But background, and, and they're looking for the quarterback of the future. I think Dayball would like to bring him in and kind of get a look at him and develop him and, and just stash him for now. I can see that. Seattle, I know they have Geno and Sam Howell, but it's not about what they have right now. I love that system for Bryce Young, that new Ryan Grubb system, more of a co more college looks. It's kind of going to give Bryce Young Alabama flashbacks in terms of the style of offense. Uh, and then for the, so the future could be Howell versus Bryce Young. Geno playing great right now through two games, but not their long-term option. And the Steelers, Justin Fields looking okay, one-year deal. They have Russell Wilson, one-year deal. So they could be looking for the guy of the future there. And the Niners might surprise some people, but they're a team that take a chance on and They bring guys in. They try to flip them for more. You know, the way they develop Purdy. Remember Purdy, early years at Iowa State, was supposed to be really good, and he kind of declined a little bit. What the Niners did, they took a sleeper, and they brought it back out of him, that talent that we once saw. So they do a good job of that so they can get Bryce Young in there, have him learn from Shanahan, Purdy, uh, and then maybe flip him for a draft pick and a trade or in terms of, or possibly a compensatory pick as well. So those teams made sense. Team that can use a long-term, they may take a flyer on him. Long-term option, depth guy right now. If I had to pick, I mean, I like some of the teams I talked about. Miami makes a lot of sense. Some Alabama connections there. I could see him being in that Mike McDaniel offense and getting more out of him. Just stash him for now, uh, high upside, just learning in that room. Even if Tua's not playing, just kind of picking his brain, uh, you know, that that would be a ideal situation. So if I had to pick one, Dolphins, at this early stage, things could change as we get close to the trade line. Dolphins stand out the most to me right now. Another Panther that could possibly be available closer to the trade deadline, depending how things go with Andy Dalton. Maybe Adam Thielen and Andy Dalton, you know, develop some sort of chemistry connection here, which is very possible. Adam Thielen seems to think highly of him, but Thielen still could play, but coming towards the end of his career, would like to go to a contender, a contending team that needs a receiver, would like to have him uh, possibly at the trade deadline. So the Rams are super beat up at receiver. The Niners have been looking for receivers. I know they got they brought back Ayuk, so maybe they're less likely to add one, but they have injuries throughout this team and the whole Pearsall situation, but Debo's currently injured, so I can see that. Uh, and then you have the Cowboys, who, I mean, CeeDee Lamb needs some help. I mean, he desperately needs some help. A lot, he's carrying so much in that. We saw it against the Saints in week two, like other guys having to make plays. They can't really do it. It's all on Lamb. 
And not that Zimmer has anything to do with a say like this. He's a defensive coach, but it feels like they're bringing in a bunch of ex-Vikings, so that would be funny. They did. Chiefs have some injuries. Could be a guy, a contending team again, could bring in. And the Falcons, a little bit of a wild card, but they, Kirk Cousins is, is there, and so they have that connection. And the Falcons' depth at receiver is pretty bad. Like, they have two big guys, two, like, studs, and then it's a little bit of a drop-off, so using that uh, uh, upgraded third option would make some sense. Fired to pick. Man, I like the Niners just going all out, you know, contend. I like quite a few teams here, but just going all out, trying to contend. They're, you know, Debo could get hurt at any time. Uh, you know, they're, maybe they're not loving the idea of playing one of the rookies this year. So, and we know they're making a push to win the Super Bowl. So, uh, the Niners stand out the most, but pretty close with some of these other teams. But Thielen, a veteran to watch. Maybe a little, for the, for him, a little closer to the trade deadline. Let's talk about one more Panther. Of course, there could be more like Miles Sanders. We've talked about him enough. But Genevion Clowney, haven't heard his name pop up much. But, man, it's a veteran edge defender that really only fits specific types of defenses. He worked really well in that Ravens defense with a lot of, you know, simulated pressures to open things up. Uh, so he needs the right team and probably needs a contending team. He's probably not going to be happy, you know, sitting there in Carolina. If they continue to lose again, we'll see what happens a little closer to the trade line. Maybe they start winning games. Who knows? Not a long list of teams that make sense. The rate Going back to the Ravens, their defense, it's still early, but their defense does not look nearly as good as it was last year. They can use another edge guy, and it was much better with Clowney. Seattle, Mike McDonald's there. He was his defensive coach last year, so we know he fits, and they could use another edge guy. They have some young guys that are pretty solid, though. And then the Bears uh, seem like before the season started, and probably still, they're looking for another edge rusher. They did add Daryl Taylor, who looked pretty good, at least in, in week one, but I Ryan Pace is making a lot of trades. Sometimes they're questionable trades, but uh, they need to be focused on the offense right now. But I definitely could see them doing something like this, and we'll talk about them and some of these other teams with some other edge rushers. But, yeah, the one that stands out the most is probably going, you know, Raven connection, probably going back to the Ravens if they need them around the trade deadline, which they probably could, or going to that Ravens defense coordinator who is the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks right now. Uh, but most definitely... Yeah, I could see him going back to one of those teams. I think the Ravens probably stand out the most there when it comes to Clowney. And the Hassan Reddick holdout continues. It's quite ridiculous. The Jets trade for him. They trade a little bit, too. And he has yet to play for them. He wants a contract. I think the Jets had to know the situation before they traded for him, but who knows. Uh, but So an odd situation, but Jermaine Johnson, who, was, who kind of broke out last year, probably is going to break out even further this year, went down with an Achilles injury, so he's out for the year. Will McDonald's looking good, though. Right now, so that, that's that's good. Their former first round pick of last year, um, you know, but they definitely could still use Reddick in there. Part of me thinks the Jets are probably going to give into this and like, yeah, we're a good team, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to contend, right? And we're not afraid to, to get better. And we have a guy that makes us better. Let's give us some. Let's let's give him some money, I guess, and, and get him on the field. Or maybe they could be pissed off about the situation, don't want to budge, and they like the emergence of Will McDonald, and they trade him. I, you know, I've seen quotes from people within the league, teams, people that work for different teams in the front office that say, yeah, the Jets are going to give in and trade them at some point. It's only a matter of time. They're going to have to almost. But I almost think they might give in and just give them the money at some point. We'll see. Cardinals stand out. Remember, B.J. Ajilari got injured before the year started. He was set for a breakout year. They need pass rushers. He fits Jonathan Gannon's defense because he played his best year under Jonathan Gannon. So the, all, for all those reasons, make a lot of sense. I guess it's going to depend on how the Cardinals are doing a little closer closer to the deadline, but they look good right now. Right now, today, as I'm talking, they're 1-1, one and one and one, but they look good. They look solid. So I mean, the Cardinals are going, okay, okay, now we see ourselves in action. We look good. Let's make ourselves even better. I can see that. Tampa definitely can use more edge rushers. You know, it's not the same edge group from a few years ago, the Super Bowl run year. They definitely could use more pieces. And they look legit right now. So they and they need help on defense. They're getting beat up on defense, different positions, but they are getting beat, beat up. So they could use him. The Bears. It sounds like they're always open to trading and open to adding pass rushers. So we'll see. I think they they need to chill a little bit in terms of the trades or look look for offense, maybe the offensive line. But uh, they keep trading a bunch of picks. Uh, you know, and they're not focusing really on the right spot. But I could see it. Tennessee. They he has a lot of connections there with defensive coaches, multiple defensive coaches. On that staff, Arden Key is good, but he more he feels more like a high end rotational guy. So getting another edge rusher, but another team, it's like maybe focus more on offense because the defense is statistically the best in football right now. But they're zero two. The defense is doing enough to win games, so maybe they don't really need him. Kind of like the Bears. 
Uh, and the Ravens. Again, we talked about Clowney for a reason. We'll talk about Reddick for a reason. They can use another edge rusher. Uh, Van Noy's been a little beat up. Young guys are stepping up. Oway's going to continue to step up. Ojabo, to me, is a high-end rotational guy. But they're trying to get that defense back on track right now, so they would, it would make some sense there. Uh, I think those first two teams stand out. Tampa should get a little healthier. The Cardinals stand out the most uh, because of connection, and they look legit. They're going to play the Lions this week. It's going to depend. Are, are, they, are they looking like a playoff team? And they boom, they could trade for a guy like Reddick or Reddick. And then if not, they start to lose a little bit more again, then they probably hold off. and kind of Because they're kind of a team that can be sneaky now, but they're also a team of the future. So they, they maybe they're a little hesitant with the draft picks, trading draft picks. And the Jets aren't going to give them away because they just traded decent value for them. So <laughs> definitely an interesting to watch. I think the Jets are probably going to give in, but you know, trusted sources, you know, people around the league say the Jets are going to give in I think give him the money, but give in and trade him. We will see. Maybe it's a little more likely again as we see Will McDonald balling right now, but it's tough that I think if Johnson stayed healthy, they'd be trading him. They'd be trading him for sure, but they still have options, so we'll see. Interesting one to watch. Another pass rusher who we talked about a little bit before the season started, Aziz Ajilari, pass rusher of the Giants. He's a backup now because they have Tibbs, and obviously they added Brian Burns. Tibbs has been a little disappointing, though, but I'm sure he'll pick it up. Maybe they keep Ajilari, you know, in case he's not playing well or because he's by, by far their best rotation. But I think there'd be teams that that be throwing, you know, something at the Giants to get him as a starter. Bring up the Cardinals again. His brother is there, B.J. Ajilari. And this kind of fits the Cardinals, I guess, philosophy perhaps of, like, they could be good now, but they're really good for the future. It kind of fits both, helping now and the future there. Uh, and then we'll fit their current scheme. Tampa seems like a good fit. They can use another option there. Uh, we mentioned Tennessee and Chicago possibly could look for an edge rusher, but Cardinals and the Bucks really have st- uh, are standing out when it when it comes to these pass rushers. Uh, you know, so I, I I look at both of those teams as serious uh, options for Ajilari. I think the Cardinals will be really looking at Reddick and Ajilari here. So some pretty good landing spots if the Giants are open to trading. I haven't really heard that yet, but you think it could be a possibility. Maybe we got to wait a little bit more closer to the trade deadline. Devin White continues to be a healthy scratch for the Eagles. Man, what happened to Devin White that Super Bowl year for the Buccaneers? He looked unreal on that Super Bowl run in the playoffs. And then, you know, the Bucs benched him at some point during the season last year. Now he goes to the Eagles. They need a linebacker help. So you figured he's starting. Nope, there's much better guys there now. And he's got a healthy scratch every week. The NFL and NFL coordinators are not a fan of Devin White right now. So if he were to be traded for, it would be dirt cheap. And it would be to a team that really doesn't love him to be a long-term starter. It's more of to a team that is a little beat up or really needs depth guys at the linebacker position. The Bills currently, they're both their starting linebackers are out. Bernard's going to be back at some point. Milano maybe later in the season at best. Ravens, I definitely think, could use a high-end rotational guy that could also blitz. That'd be Devin White. Uh, and the Jets uh, have replaced Mosley since the injury, which sure would, but definitely could use some rotation there. So it's just mainly teams that just, we need a guy. We need a body in there that has some experience and could be a pretty good rotational guy if he has to start because we have so many injuries. You know, so that's why the Bills probably stand out the most. But I don't think teams are really dying to have to trade for Devin White. It's just, again, somebody might become desperate for a linebacker and the only one that seems to be available right now or that could be available is the healthy scratch of the first two weeks, Devin White. Jonathan Jones, an interesting one, corner from the Patriots. It's interesting because people really aren't talking about him as a trade candidate. I'm just kind of using logic, uh, expiring contract. Patriots are in rebuild. They're not starting May for a reason. You know, they're. It's not going to be the best season in the world, even though the first couple weeks it looked pretty decent. The third week against the Jets on Thursday night, just a couple days ago, kind of showed the Patriots that we expect for this year. So. They sold. They 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 could be sellers. They sold Matthew Judon, who's a really good player for them. They could sell another veteran here, which teams would be dying to have a guy that, that has good experience, especially in man coverage, playing outside and inside. Uh, you know, there could be more teams that need a corner, but he he there. You know, a lot of those teams maybe zone more a zone defense, and Jonathan Jones has been more man. But that doesn't mean they can't trade for him. But the Jags really stand out to me. Definitely could use another corner that can play outside and in as a bonus. Uh, and, and Ryan Nielsen would like to run more man coverage there. Uh, Washington, their corners are really struggling. Dan Quinn likes to run a lot of man coverage. Is just, are they more focused on the future? That's kind of what's stopping them, perhaps. Do they want to trade for a veteran? Ravens definitely could use another piece. Uh, and it'll be appealing that, that he can play man inside or out. And the Falcons are more 
of a zone defense, you know, specifically a lot of cover four under Raheem Morris, but I think they'd be open to it. They're not afraid to make that move, and they they it feels like they badly need a corner right now. It's AJ Terrell, and they really could use upgrades other than that. You know, outside or inside, other than Terrell, I should say. So those are the teams that stand out the most. I really like Jacksonville. Jacksonville for them. Maybe they don't because Tyson Campbell could be back uh, at some point, but they still could use you know an option here. Darby has durability concerns, so and I thought it was a really good scheme fit under Ryan Nielsen, so Jaguars stand out a bit for a guy that kind of is a sneaky trade candidate, maybe a little closer to the deadline, but one to watch there. Remember last trade deadline, the Broncos were apparently going to have a fire sale, and that did not happen. Maybe it happens this year, but a guy that, that stands out is DJ Jones, who doesn't get full-time starter reps. He is a nose tackle. He's used, he's used on running downs. Uh, and if the Broncos continue to lose, they could sell some guys like this. And there are a ton of even decent good teams out there that are desperate for run-stop help. They're desperate for nose tackles. Cowboys are one of them. They've been scrambling for a guy like that. They need help stopping to run. Uh, Bengals have multiple injuries currently on the interior. They lost DJ Reader, who was their run-stuffing nose tackle. Replace him at Rankins. He really isn't a nose tackle. And again, currently little shaken up. Uh, the Dolphins' run defense looks awful. They're missing Christian Wilkins, even though Jones is a little bit different of a player. Obviously not as a lot different in terms of talent, but a little different style of player, but helped him stop the run. And he was once a very good football player sometime recently on the 49ers, and they always are looking to collect his defensive lineman. I heard they were interested in trade for him, trading for him, but that was before they traded for Collins, which that was a really good pickup. But I still think they could be interested uh, in DJ Jones. Uh, bringing him back, but the Bengals really stand out. Will they actually make the move? They just signed Lawrence Guy, but they need help stopping the run badly, and they've had a couple injuries up there, so they really stand out. But all these teams uh, really stand out for a guy that could be available at the tra- around the trade deadline. Damian Pierce, we talked a lot about before the season started. I, I think closer to the trade deadline, a team could look to to deal for him, uh, maybe find him a better fit because he looked pretty damn good his rookie year. Another you know another running back, Miles Sanders. We could talk about two at the same landing spots, but the Cowboys could use a running back. They have a few Raiders running games not going too well right now. The Browns, depending on if Nick Chubb comes back or not, uh, sooner or later than expected. Uh, They have Ford. They have Foreman. I don't know if they're in love with those guys right now. Ford was running really well last week, and they just weren't giving the ball enough. I could see it as a fit. And the Chiefs, Pacheco is going to miss six to eight weeks. Yeah, they have P. Ryan. Barely played last week. Uh, I feel like they like Steele. He had a fumble last week. Uh, I could definitely see. The Chiefs, I definitely could see. I, I think the Raiders stand out the most. It just kind of fits their motto, looking at physical running backs uh, as they have uh, a couple in there that, that fit that profile. They're just not running super well right now, so they could use a, another guy to compete with those guys. So the Raiders, the Raiders excuse me, uh, stand out the most. I do like the Chiefs as well, though, for Damian Pierce, Miles Sanders, uh, running backs that could be available. Traylon Burks of the Titans, a former first-round pick that it sounds funny, but actually was supposed to be the A.J. Brown replacement. Has not worked out like that. Uh, hasn't really been playing this new Titans staff, and they have pretty good receivers. So I could definitely see a team going for him that could use a rotation receiver. There's quite a few teams that could use a rotational receiver. And the teams I listed, man, I think Burks fits those systems very well. Like the teams that like that are looking for a physical underneath after the catch type guy. Uh Steelers, Arthur would fit Arthur Smith's offense very well. Eagles, they traded for AJ Brown, but they definitely could use depth receiver and they get a physical guy here. The Lions, it just kind of fits. You know, Lions definitely need depth. They don't need starters. Kind of fits like their the, the physicality profile they look for. Uh, the Niners, could they turn them into a poor man's Debo Samuel, who's currently injured? And the Saints, you know, the Saints, are, the offense is all based around running the football, being physical, you know, quick. So could they open up, you know, uh, they have the downfield game with Olave and Shahid. Could they open up kind of an underneath passing game with him? Uh, so I do like, I do like the thought of San Francisco kind of, learning from Debo being kind of the future him as he is beat up right now. The Steelers probably make the most sense, though. They were looking for a receiver, you know, better receiver before the season started, but they badly need rotation depth. Just feels like an Arthur Smith guy, uh, and he has the Tennessee Titans background as well, uh, you know, coaching there. So I thought that was a really good fit for, uh, uh, you know, a disappointing first-round pick, but that still has some upside uh, if he puts it together. And then one more, a little bit of a wild card. What if Russell Wilson is traded? What if he gets upset? You know, what if they continue to, they're 2-0 with Justin Fields. He's taking care of the ball. He's playing okay. We'll see how he does against the Chargers this week. 
But what if he continues to play well? And they're like, yeah, Russ, we're going with Fields the rest of the year. Uh, maybe he wants to go somewhere that could use him. Russ would be the landing a landing spot for a team that could use a starter right now. And there really isn't many. The Dolphins, you know, Tua went down. I think he'll be back at some point this year. They have other options. So I still think it's unlikely. The Titans, a little bit more of a wild card. They're... Seems like they're upset with Levis right now. At least Brian Callahan is. The defense is doing enough to win games. They have receivers. Levis just keeps making questionable decisions. So do they bring in some serious competition to help them win more football games they feel like they should be winning? It's possible. Uh, hopefully no more starting quarterbacks go down. But if a starting quarterback does go down from now up in week three, uh, we're heading right into week three, uh, up until the trade deadline. Uh, I, if they're... Their, their first call probably would be the Steelers for Russell Wilson, but I also think the Steelers could keep him in case Fields starts turning the ball over or, you know, they really feel like they need that backup. Fields has past injury, little things that popped up. So I think it's a dark horse here. I think a team would have to be desperate. Nobody's definitely today dying to trade for Russell Wilson, and the Steelers may just rather keep him unless they get something decent for him. So I've heard people brought, bring him up a little bit, but – I think it's more of a dark horse. Some of these guys are more on this video more likely than others. Uh, we will have, we usually have loads of content leading up to the trade deadline with the latest rumors, predictions, trade candidates. So uh, make sure you turn notifications on uh, for that. But for our weekly content with picks, power rankings, bets, and a lot more, you're going to want to join us for that. So subscribe, turn notifications on. A like would be much appreciated as well. Check out those week three videos. Those are up. It's going to do it though for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.